first I will explain, uh, briefly explain what is a climate data rescue for metallurgists. Uh, climate data rescue is uh, an ongoing proce process of uh, archiving, searching, and locating climate uh, records on microfiche on, or paper media. So, for example, Metro France uh, has climate archives, uh, and uh, we have uh, um, around uh, eight kilometers, linear kilometers of uh, paper archives. Um, the climate data rescue, the, the second action is uh, imagined original documents, storaging of image files and on, uh, for Metro France on the Metro France storage server. Uh, the third task is uh, digitizing uh, data values, param metallurgical parameters, and of course, quality controlling digitized uh, data. Uh, the, last, the last task is uh, um, integrating digitized data and metadata into the French National Climatological Database, BDCLIM. So I, I would insist uh, when I say data, it's um, always data and metadata. Data rescue, climate data rescue involves rescuing both the data and metadata. Um, So uh, I, I would like to show, uh, um, in order to explain what is uh, climate data rescue, to show the material of climate data rescue, we have original sources of uh, metallurgical uh, formulas uh, containing obs uh, metallurgical observations. So in the right, um, you can see original source, uh, rainfall, um, rainfall observations. It's a, a monthly formula, and uh, in, in, um, I wanted to, to show where are the data on the sheet and where we have the metadata, metadata in the sheet. We have uh, on this sheet uh, several parameters observed, visibility, wind direction, wind strength, rain, and snow depth, for example. And uh, we have a lot of metadata, but in, in different um, uh, 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 forms. Uh, we have the producer, we have the title of, uh, of the document, we have uh, the, the date of the document, we have the name of the station. We, it's written that the observation are made at 7 uh, hour, uh, in the morning. We have the name of the observer, Lucien Chanelli, Water and Forest Guard, so we can know uh, the network of the data. And we have the document reference, it's uh, ONM 159BIS, uh, um, so it's, uh, we know that the producer is the uh, Office National Meteorologic, so the National Meteorological Service at, at that time. Uh, so we, we, we review all the, the documents generally to keep and to search all the metadata and data. The second page of the document is uh, is uh, instruction for observers, and in this sheet we have a lot of metadata, very important metadata. For example, we know that the observations are made every morning at seven o'clock, but in winter time, not uh, not local time, not uh, UTC times, winter times. Uh, we we know that rain is uh, measured at seven o'clock, but um, the total is from the previous day, and this value should be attributed to, to the previous day in the database. This kind of uh, metadata is very important, and uh, a lot of former colleagues did some mistakes when they put the data in the database because the the value is in the line for the day D, and the value is uh, guilty for the day uh, for the previous day. So we we know that the wind direction is uh, written in three letters. It's uh, old wind rows in uh, 16 uh, di direction. We have the wind strength scale uh, from uh, zero to six. It's, it is not Beaufort scale. It is not um, a, a wind speed. It's a, a, a special scale. 
And uh, at the end, we know that uh, monthly precipitation is calculated without the value of the first day, and uh, the value of the, of the first line should be attributed to the last day of the previous month. So, so just to show it, to, to illustrate uh, what, what material we, we use to recover uh, climate data rescue in, in situ station. Uh, now I will illustrate how we are organized for this action of uh, earlier data rescue and how the um, data management principle uh, are in the heart of our work. So I will uh, show you all the examples of the um, principle, data management principle. Uh, first one, metadata for discovery. So discovery element uh, for their their data rescue projects are closely and labor intensive. It takes a lot of time to to locate uh, data, locate records, and to um, to find metadata. So duplication of work should be avoided. Uh, the important first step is to check whether the climate records of interest have already been inventoried. So catalogs are very important, and uh, CS3S was uh, very um, motivated to to create um, the global registry uh, to catalog all the data recovered under uh, uh, several international um, projects. So now the most comprehensive source of such information is the Copernicus CS3S data rescue registry. So for, you can have catalogs from um, upper observation meta, metadata inventory, for example. Uh, we participate, Metro France participated to a project uh, on upper air observation and all the, all the data are inventoried and uh, can, uh, in catalogs. Uh, DMP2 uh, on online access. Um, so when we search um, all data, uh, earlier data, we, we search uh, everywhere and so it's very useful for us to have, um, to have uh, access, accessible data via online services. It facilitates uh, our work. We can uh, find uh, images in publications uh, containing climate data. For example, the French National Library has an online service and images of publications can be directly downloaded. Uh, we have a lot of uh, old publications with uh, climate data and uh, NOAA Library, for example, uh, gives uh, image um, give access to image publication and uh, publication can be directly downloaded very useful for, for Africa countries, for example. Uh, uh, we can, uh, too, um, find some image archives, image original sources online. For example, we, we participated to image uh, the met meteorological observations of the Royal Society of Medicine. Uh, the, the, um, we, so with uh, the access to this very old data from the 18th century, we could recover some data from this period. So thanks to the access. Um, for data, there are a lot of uh, databases, and for example, uh, French climate database, BDCLIM, uh, French climate data are stored in the BDCLIM and accessible via online services. This data is accessible via online services for download with a, with a visualization. Um, about international databases, uh, for our work, these um, databases are not so useful uh, because uh, the, the national database is more precise and uh, in international databases, uh, there were a lot of amalgamation of both range of of underlying sources. So DMP uh, data data encoding. Um, 
So the target user community here is the climatologist of Meteo France. We we have a national um, French climate database, BDCLIM. Uh, we use the, uh, the PostgreSQL PostgreSQL management system. Um, we uh, we have uh, different tables for data and metadata management. This this uh, this, this is due to the history of uh, the organization of the climatology in the past. We have we had uh, special metadata formulas, information about the station, information information about the station, and this uh, formula was was filled when creating the station and during the visits uh, site visits. So every every year. Uh, data formula uh, or um, uh, climate formula, methodical observation was filled every day and or every month and sent to the national office uh, every month. So the, the, the documents were not, not uh, stored at the same place in the same, lo same location. Um, we have different tables for hourly, daily or monthly data. Uh, this choice, this choice is aligned with organizational uh, needs and observing methods and user needs. It's uh, very often in uh, national meteorological office this kind of uh, organizations of data, and uh, daily and monthly data are consistent uh, with uh, hourly data. Uh, and in the national French climate database, we, we of course have all the international standardized parameters. For data rescue, we, we don't rescue, we cover all the data to too many data and uh, we, we recover the essential climate variables and uh, we, we recover the closest data to the original observation. So uh, it's um, it means that uh, we we recover daily temperature and precipitation, and we recover sub daily surface pressure, sub daily temperature, sub daily wind speed and wind direction. We recover upper air temperature, wind speed and direction, and snow depths. I'm waiting because I, I know that it takes time to, to have the slide. Um, about uh, data docu documentation, uh, early observation used a broad uh, range of instrumentation, emerging measurement system and disparated uh, measurement scales. When I, I say um, early observation, it's, uh, it means, uh, it means uh, data from the 18th centuries. Uh, retrieving the metadata is a very long and expensive process, we, which requires a lot of expertise. We do it because this data is super important to our work. Um, we, we, look, we look for metadata everywhere, in every archive we have, uh, on, in, on the web too. Uh, this is why I, I am happy to have this opportunity to advocate for good quality and comprehensive metadata. People in uh, 19, um, uh, 90, uh, century might not uh, know how important the data would be uh, hundred late, year, years later. Now we know. So if I, I will explain how, what we what we do to 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 recover metadata. Uh, for example, um, methodical formulas containing data of uh, early observation are, are poor in metadata. So we we review uh, the formula, and the review of all the formula permits to know few elements, but very important: the name of the station. Um, the altitude of the station, uh, observed variables, of course, 
uh, unit of uh, variables, altitude of the barometer and the network of the station. For example, hospital, school, lighthouse, uh, airport and army. And with uh, the knowledge of the history of the metallurgical observation, uh, with the search in different archives, in the database, in, on the web, we are capable to identify the station and its location. It, it, can be, it can be very long to identify the station because sometimes there are some mistakes in databases, there are some mistakes in the documents, so it's a, it's a detective work. Um, the, so it's very important to, to identify the station and uh, it's not so easy because we have a very rich heritage and we have several stations in the same city uh, for, early, um, for previously. After searching in the metadata sheets on paper form, on catalog of instruments and publication, we can finally give a few but very important elements to be integrated in the climate database. So we, we try to put uh, name of the city, location, history of the instrument, history of the altitude of the station, uh, history of the altitude of the barometer, if there is a barometer, observed variables and units. It's, um, it's basic, but uh, we, we are try, trying to give this kind of metadata for all the uh, early data recovered. So, I just, um, I wanted to add that uh, uh, for, for this uh, element data documentation, it's recommended to describe in peer-reviewed uh, publications reference uh, in metadata records. So I have a very good example uh, in the framework of the European project ERACLIM. Uh, there is an article describing um, the, up, the upper, uh, upper uh, recovered and uh, data are catalog catalogued and can be downloaded, uh, free downloaded uh, on, on, on the web. Uh, data traceability. Uh, we we are we are trying to to keep all the step of the data rescue chain uh, action for each uh, series long term series that we recover. We we follow all the the, the different tasks and uh, since uh, 2007. All the steps of the data rescue chain has been described in a file. Action identif identifier, original sources, images, images, storage locations, specifications for data keying, very important uh, for, for the digitized data, name of keying operator, unit conversion calculation. Uh, raw, raw digitized data are also kept and uh, because operator case has ECs, so it's, it's, it is not the original sources, but it's not so far from the original sources. Now we, we are trying to, to do best and uh, a new table in the database is being developed in order to keep some metadata about data rescued, rescue action in the climate database for direct access and direct easy access. Um, identification of action, station identifier, parameters, period, location of all digitized data. So a lot of metadata about the just action of rescue. And we have a, we have a, a special date table in the database that are risk inserts to, to trace all the actions. So because the provenance of metadata is very important, super important to us, we want to, to, to return, to be able to return to the sources when we do some uh, controls, check quality, and, and when we have um, uh, errors, we want to know where we, uh, we want to know the provenance of uh, the errors.
data quality control. So quality control is a is a continuous uh, background uh, task uh, in the climate uh, department uh, for early data um, data rescue actions. Access to original sources is the uh, occasion to check data already in the database. So we know that we have mistakes in the database. And when we have access to the original sources, we check the data already in the database. First checks and basis checks are station, date, and parameters. Sometimes uh, there were uh, previously some um, errors of uh, identification of, of the station, errors of uh, the date of the station, uh, sometimes one day error, uh, and so sometimes error with uh, parameters. Uh, for example, uh, the pressure at the level station and the pressure at the sea, sea level. Numerous uh, mistakes were made, and so, so we have uh, we have to, uh, for example, between lighthouses and semaphore, the location of these two buildings are very um, near, and so sometimes we, they they did mistake about uh, lighthouses and semaphore. Uh, we we, di we do uh, all the quality control on uh, early observations. Uh, digitized data, after digitizing, uh, are checked before integration in the database by different automatic quality controls as close as possible to the controls used by controls used today, today and every day. Uh, each early data has a quality control in the database. Uh, data origin can be provided for early observation rescued since uh, 2007. Before we didn't have uh, the metadata about uh, about early data uh, uh, in the database. Uh, we um, we have a special table to in uh, for to describe specificities found on a series. For example, um, we have um, at the beginning of the 20th century a lot of non-standard shelters for uh, temperature measurement. And um, it's very important to, to know if there is a shelter for the measurement of temperature. Uh, Sylvie? Yes. Yes. Uh, I see we are on on the six, and we are we have three more. I'm looking at the time. Uh, I hope Bob yes, is yes, able yes. to stay on. <laughs> this is so really I interesting. Just, uh, yeah. Yes, I, I I thought it's too long because uh, I have a, perhaps I can uh, just uh, go to the uh, DMP nine. Very important for climate change. Oh, you can do all of them, but just uh, not so thorough. Yeah. Ah, I, I changed. So I am in a DMP9 uh, about uh, data review and reprocessing. Each project is an opportunity to review the data and its metadata with a new view that helps in identifying the errors and heterogeneities. So in order to to study the climate change, it's very important to to study is to 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 study the long series and uh, because the long term instrumental climate records have uh, have inhomogeneities artificial shift due to change in the measurement conditions so for temperature for example the change of shelter is a source of break in a series so all the Methodical services have an important activity of homogenization of a long series um, that aims at reviewing long series of data and identifying the disruptions. So for this kind of work, uh, metadata are very useful and very important to analyze uh, which can be the source reason for this disruption and to determine accurately the break dates. So, uh, we homogenize the temporal series of temperature and, and rainfall, and uh, 
we we store this homogenized monthly homogenized series of measurement into a new data set in a new, new uh, table in our database we keep always keep the original data so these homogenized series are the reference series for climate change de detection and attribution studies and for past climate evolution diagnosis uh, dmp 10 uh, per Persistent and resolvable identifier. Uh, for us, the uh, key and the, the identifier for a station is a, uh, for, for the series is at first a station identifier. Unique and persistent key element for the uh, database. Common element for all the BT clean tables. It's a national identifier built with the National Statistics Institute number of the place uh, of the municipality. Uh, we, co we build the, the station identifier with the number of the city and the number of the station in the municipality. WMO identifier is not used because very few stations have a WMO identifier, just uh, professional stations. And uh, WMO identifier has been used for several measures, for the same the same identifier, uh, uh, WMO identifier, has been used for several measurement sites. So we don't use WMO identifier for rescue. So data are specified by uh, the station identifier, the date, the parameter, as, and the temporal frequency. Metro France National Metrological Service. So we have the national data policy. It's, it's the answer is no uh, travel. Uh, some data are opened, free opened, but uh, climate data, data, so that I, I talk about are not free. Uh, there is a royalty, but uh, it's free for researchers and historians. If we have uh, researchers demanding uh, climate data, we we provide uh, them free. So, but it's wh when we recover data in some projects, uh, it's free. It's, it's all the data are given to the project and to a uh, database. And uh, Metro France uh, regularly provides. Uh, selected long series to international databases so it's uh, it's not trivial the answer you understand it's a mix of uh, open not open <laughs>